Tonight's show is brought to you by the Ozark Highlands Trail Association, Vendetti Optics, and you, our listeners. Because when you're talking about a guided adventure, I mean, you can just show up with a smile on your face. Well, I mean, you might want to wear clothes. I don't know how these individual outfitters feel about that. Some of them may enjoy you showing up with nothing but a smile on your face. is up all of you wayward souls and welcome back to the wayward stories podcast wayward stories is the podcast where we tell the tales of our wanderings and our wonderings our adventures and self-discovery and self-exploration and just getting out there and trying to live our experiential lives get out and do it as they say you know get busy living or get busy dying like i hate to tell you this guys we're all already busy dying so we should probably consider maybe getting off the couch, going out there and starting to do a little bit of living. Anyway, I am happy to have you all aboard. I would like to welcome all of our new listeners that we picked up over the weekend at the Ozarks Home and Recreation Expo, um, which has been a couple of weeks ago now as you are listening to this. Um, it was a great weekend. We're going to talk about that a little bit tonight before we get started. In fact, tonight's episode was inspired by some of the people that I met over the course of that weekend. I'm super excited about it. I'm super excited about tonight's episode, but I just want to thank each and every one of you and welcome you aboard, everyone who picked us up. And there has been a substantial number of you, and that just excites me to no end. That was just a win, win, win for everyone at the expo. Um... And I'm glad to have you guys aboard. If you're listening, let me give you the spill now why it's at the forefront of my mind. If you are coming on board and you're listening, if you enjoy it, please, please, please rate, review, and subscribe the show wherever you get your podcast, whatever player you listen through, please do. Or interact with me on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube. Um, there's a million different reasons that all have to do with like nerdy computery stuff. It's all like algorithms and all that kind of stuff. Just please interact with the show. That's the best thing you can do to help keep us recording it. If you like listening to it, there's got to be some kind of you know feedback at some point. I've got to get more and more listeners, and we really got to grow the show. And the best way to do that is just by interacting with me. Ratings, reviews, subscriptions are the absolute best thing you can possibly do, and I appreciate every single one of them. Um, yeah. So let's, um, let's get going. What are we going to talk about tonight? Well, first of all, let's do kind of the, um, let's give a little idea of the outline of the episode. We'll do a little housekeeping here in a minute. And there's not really actually any housekeeping tonight. Um, what we would call housekeeping is probably going to be me just telling you guys, everyone's been super curious. I've been getting a lot of emails and messages, you know, how did the show go? How'd the show go? How'd the show go? Cause I hyped it up for three months, you know? So we're going to talk about that. Um, and that'll, that'll pretty much probably really be the, the episode outline. And we're going to start talking about all the stuff tonight, but I do have one thing that is not really related to tonight's show. Um, but is related to getting out, living your life. And it's something that with Christmas fast approaching, I, I think I just wanted to throw this out here, something for you guys to consider. I was talking with my, um, surrogate mother here recently, one of my absolute favorite humans, on this planet. Um, she and I have been friends for like 17 years now. No, that's not, that can't be possible. 13 or 14 years now. Yeah, that's no wait. God dang it. Time's flying. I am old now. Yeah. 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 I'd be closer to 17 years. Um, she is an incredible human being. One of my favorite people on this planet. And she kind of became a surrogate mother even before my mom passed away. She's just that person. And one of my closest, closest confidence, confidants in this whole world. And we were just talking this last week. And she was telling me about her and, and all of her kids. And I'm talking about Christmas last year. She said, we, we're going to, um, I think we're going to take a trip this year for Christmas. We're going to do a gift and a memory. And I was like, hold up, what do you mean a gift and a memory? Because this is not, I've never thought of this this way. But her and her wife and their kids, what they're going to do instead of like, she, here's how she said it to me. She said, look, last year we spent like $1,500 on all these kids. And like, I don't even remember what we did. 
none of it's still around to be seen. You know, we spent $1,500 on gifts and it's like, what, what did, what did that amount to? So this year we've decided instead we're going to buy them a gift, one gift, a single gift, a good gift, a meaningful one. But what we're going to do instead of buying a whole bunch of other gifts to go with it, we're going to make a memory. We're going to go on an adventure. We're going to go on a trip. Y'all, that resonates with my soul. I love it. I mean, it's sort of in line. I've told you guys since my divorce and I don't have any family and I'm not going to be selfish and keep my daughter away from all of her cousins and the people she loves to play with and a great family dinner. I never, ever have my daughter on Christmas or Thanksgiving. So I've come up with my own little traditions. You know, I go and give myself an adventure, which speaking of which, I may have a really exciting one lined up for Thanksgiving weekend. This coming up in a couple of weeks, we're going to see where the road takes me. But y'all, we might have some really cool episodes coming up here pretty soon. But anyway, it kind of lines up with that whole idea in a sense. But y'all, give that some consideration. You got all these, you know, you got your kids, you got family members. Maybe it's just you and your partner. Who the heck ever? And you always buy each other stuff. But like after a while, how much, especially us adults, right? I'm figuring out my demographic for this show is like people that are closer to my age, probably 30 and on up because the kids, they don't have time to listen to my long winded old man bull crap. Yeah. Yes. You're very preachy old man. You know, like they don't have time for that. So as we get older, what do we find? You know, you can only buy older people so much crap before it becomes exactly that. Just crap right? It's like, okay, you know, there was a few things in the world that I love to do and like, whoever, whatever it is, I'll go to awesome set of golf clubs and I got a great set of hiking boots and I got an awesome brand new fly rod, whatever. How many of those can you buy them? You know, what, 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 after a while, you're just like, you're clutching at straws trying to figure out what to get someone. Well, quit buying people materialistic crap that's going to the rot and perish and, and dissolve away over the years and, and might not even be that meaningful to start with. And start going out and making memories that will literally live with you for the rest of your life. Y'all, that's just a, such a great idea. Just a, just an idea. Just throwing it out there. It was it, it struck me so that I wanted to come share it with you guys tonight. I wanted to make sure and throw it out there and give you guys something to consider. I just think that is an awesome idea. So anyway, with that out of the way, let's talk about how the expo went for Wayward Stories for Justin, the old Wayward Son over here. Y'all, first of all, it went awesome. Okay, it was a blast. It was one of, ah, God, it's one of, one of the most fun things I can do, and I don't remember when. I had an incredible time. Um, for the show, let's break it down by metrics, let's say. For the show itself, as far as new listeners, um, new subscriptions, it was very significant. I'm not going to say it was astronomical because it wasn't, but it was very, very significant. A significant rise, a significant bump, a ton of extra downloads that that's in excess of what I normally see, a bunch of new YouTube subscribers. That was that was a win, 100%. Again, not astronomical, but very significant, very good. But beyond that, it was even more successful in all of the connections I got to make with all of the people that were there mostly other exhibitors, but you guys, especially some of you that have come on and you're listening now because you met me at the uh, expo. I want to tell you right now, being very, very real. I love the conversation I had with you. Like whichever one you were, all I did, all I did for three straight days is talk to the point that I had no voice come Monday morning. I tried to go into work Monday morning and I sounded like a toad. Okay. My voice was gone. Because I literally talked from the moment those doors opened and even before to the other exhibitors and vendors and good friends, good connections that I made. I talked for freaking 14 or 15 hours a day for three straight days. I mean, not joking. And y'all, I talked to so many people and had very real, very serious conversations. And when I say serious, I'm not talking like, you know, like all heavy conversations, but I mean real human connections real human interactions. Like I had so many great conversations that day and you'd be surprised you guys that are listening now that came on from the show and sat there and talked to me. You might be surprised how many of you I remember our conversation. Those are the things. That's the reason I make this podcast is the human connections. I absolutely love connecting with people and I love sharing our stories. 
And for the rest of you that didn't meet me there and have never got to have a one-on-one conversation with me, this is the kind of thing that I keep talking about for the last 50, what are we on, 57 episodes? Tonight's 57. It's that sharing that means something. When we start talking, you'd be surprised how many people came up and they're like, oh, okay, Wayward Stories podcast, you say, what's that all about? And then I'm over here trying to encapsulate this weird amalgamous ball that I have and try to put it into words, like where it kind of came from, like baby, basically what's the motivation behind it? Why are we doing this? And, and what am I talking about in it and trying to tie all that together? And as I would go through my little spill, you'd be amazed. You'd be amazed. That's why I had so damn many conversations that meant something over that weekend is because it resonates with people. They were like, Oh yeah, man, I'll tell you what I went through X at certain time in my life. And, you know, since then I've done this and this and like so many people, y'all, I felt I met so many kindred spirits. I'm telling you, it's everyone in the world has a story. Everyone in the world has something. And when we share them together, like guys, it just, the world gets better. Everything gets a little bit better. Great, great, great time meeting people. And I'm so glad I got to meet all of you. Um, as far as making say professional connections, let's say networking, y'all, that's what tonight's show is about. We're going to do a show tonight called I have titled tentatively Arkansas Guided Adventures because there were a whole lot of people there as exhibitors who are doing guided adventures in Arkansas. And it kind of struck me. This is a great idea for a show. We can talk about because what do I'm always you guys know me. I'm very independent, self-sufficient person and I got my little system and I'm super minimalist and I've, I've built a whole modular system built around getting me outside way more often for as cheap as I possibly can and with as little hassle as possible because like you, I have a normal life with a 45, 50 hour a week job, going to college and a child. Like I'm just as busy as y'all. So you have to put forethought into getting your butt out the door and into the great outdoors, right? Um, Well, guided adventures are a possibility, guys. They're a very real option for that because when you're talking about a guided adventure, I mean, you can just show up with a smile on your face. Well, I mean, you might want to wear clothes. I don't know how these individual outfitters feel about that. Some of them may enjoy you showing up with nothing but a smile on your face, but I'm not going to speak for them. Um, and I'm definitely not going to speak for myself, but you just show guys, you just show when they take care of the rest. Okay. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Made some great, great, um, Great connections, and hopefully I intend to work with some of these guys in the future, very much utilize some of their services so I can come back and give a whole podcast to you guys about what it's like to go do this or that or the other. We're going to go through them here in just a little while. Um, A couple of other things. There's two people that I met there that don't really fall into the purview of tonight's theme, but I want to mention and talk about. And one of them is, you heard it at the very top of the show when I said, brought to you by the Ozark Highlands Trail Association. Why is that? Well, they're not sponsoring me. You guys know how I like to put stuff in there and bring awareness to stuff I believe in and really, really like. Well, the Ozark's Highland Trail Associate, or Ozark Highlands Trail Association is essentially an association of like-minded people like us who love the outdoors and their job, their duty, what they do in this world is get together and go out and maintain and build that beautiful Ozarks Highland, Ozark Highlands Trail that we have here through Northwest Arkansas. And currently they're even, even working on a connection to a trail system in Missouri. And they're going to try to create the Trans Ozarks Trail, like a, a big connector that is a huge long through hike through the Ozark Mountains. Because as many as you know that are local, the Ozarks start down here just north of Fort Smith and just north of Little Rock as you cut across the state on 40, um, about halfway down through the state of Arkansas, extend all the way up into Missouri and then kind of merge into the St. Francois or the St. Francis Mountains going up almost to St. Louis. It's a huge highlands area, uplands area here right in the heart of the United States. And they're going to try to slap those two together where that trail will run from Lake Fort Smith State Park some 15 minutes north of where I sit right now and go all the way to St. Louis. Okay, they do really cool stuff. And I want to bring attention to them for any of you here in northwest Arkansas or even central Arkansas, anywhere in the area. Consider devoting some time to that. Y'all get outside and do something. Here's a group of people like let me give you a little quick idea what they do. They have club meetings, they have chapter meetings, they have two chapters. One is 
based in Harrison, um, up in the heart of the Buffalo River region, and the other is based in Washington County, which is right up by the um, Lake Fort Smith side. It's a little bit further north than that, but not too far. Um, they get together, have club meetings, chapter meetings, they have hiking and backpacking trips, they have trail care days, trail building camps, um, they have a ton of stuff they do. It's a big club, guys, for people who are out there that want to get outside but also want to give back and do something good for all of our fellow hikers out there and birders and whatever all it is that you love to do when you go out hiking. This is what they're all about. So you guys should absolutely consider giving some of your time to them if you're local. And their website is www.ozarkhighlandstrail.com. So check them out. I spent time talking with Adam Higginbotham, I believe I pronounced it right. I knew a friend, and Adam, if you ever hear this, I had a friend many years ago, spelled the same way, but he called himself Higginbottom. So, but anyway, spent time talking with him. He's the sales floor manager at Packrath. They were my neighbor booth at the Outdoor Expo. And I spent some time talking with him because he was at the Ozark Highlands Trail Association tent, which was right next to Packrath's tent, uh, not tent, but um, booth. And he has a big hand in the trail association. We spent a lot of time talking. Um, Super cool dude, super cool guy. And I just wanted to shout them out and uh, bring some exposure to them. Not that they don't already have a bunch, but every little bit helps, right? So anyway, check that out, guys. And the other one I wanted to talk about, and this one is the one outlier that's not really outdoor related tonight, but I am going to shout them out and I'm going to do it quickly to stay in theme. But there was a booth right across from me, and I spent a great deal of time talking with this guy. Um, His name is Travis Kersey. And anyway, he has Pin Wolf Golf. And what it is, guys, is it's like a golf simulator. And I'm just shouting him out because he and his business partner, Sean Nicholas, are two of the coolest dudes that I've ever met. And Sean has got a hell of a story, which maybe someday way down the road, if we ever start taking interviews and guests on this show, he'd be one for me to talk to because he's got a really awesome story that the world needs to hear. But these guys are just really good guys, and their little thing is essentially this. It's like simulated golf where you get to hit, swing real clubs in the whole nine, but you can do it indoors. And they're swing coaches and all the nine. They have like 150,000 courses you can play. Um, And I think they even have, yes, they have leagues. So anyway, www.pinwolf.com, P-I-N-W-O-L-F. Anyway, they were just awesome people. I had a great time talking to him, just throwing it out there. You guys should go check him out. So let's get on past how the Ozarks Rec Expo went. It was a significant success in all avenues. Um, And I'm really excited. We're already starting to see it grow and grow. Let's see, like when in this kind of world, in the digital world, in the content creation world, things have to snowball. You don't just have like big, like catalytic events and everything is suddenly, bam, you made it. You have like these things where you kind of, you kind of get, you know what? Let's go bushcraft for a second. It's kind of like getting that initial spark into a good and well-built nest and trying to start a fire from scratch. You get the ember first, and then you have to grow. It has to grow. It has to start to consume. And that's kind of how things like this work. You get you a really good event. You get your stuff out there. And then it's the weeks and months that follow where you really start to see it come to fruition. And that's how this is going to be. I knew it before I started it, and it's already starting to show, like the fire starting to grow. It was all around a huge success, so much so that I am actively looking for more expos to get involved in. I'm looking at one in Springfield, Missouri for next spring right now. If that's possible, I intend to be up there. It was just that much fun and it was that successful overall. Um, So anyway, big win, Ozarks Rec Expo, super, super awesome. So let's get into the theme of tonight's show that was, again, inspired by being at the Expo. The very first guided adventure that we're going to talk about tonight, actually we're going to do two, is it's a little bit different okay it is exclusive not everyone can do it but what it is is it's called real recovery and i talked to this gentleman named bob albrecht and he's the co-state coordinator for the state of arkansas for real recovery and i'm going to read to you from their literature that i got from him what they are 
and this will apply to, unfortunately will apply to probably a great deal of you out there, but I want you to know it's here because according to him, they actually have trouble filling their slots, you know, filling their open spaces. And that's um, unfortunate because I know that there's a lot of you out there that could fall right into this category. All right. Real Recovery. Real Recovery is a national nonprofit organization that conducts free fly fishing retreats for men recovering from all forms of cancer. Combining expert fly fishing instruction with directed courageous conversations, quote, end quote, the organization offers a unique experience for men with cancer, a time to share their stories, learn a new skill, form friendships, and gain renewed hope as they confront the challenges of their recovery. Retreats are conducted over a two and a half day period at fly fishing facility slash lodge with on-site or nearby fishing access. All meals, lodging, and fly fishing equipment are provided at no cost to the participants. Retreats are led by professional facilitators and expert fly fishing instructors. A maximum of 10 men are invited to participate this year due to COVID protocol to ensure the quality of the instruction and to create a powerful small group dynamic. Their goals are to provide a safe, reflective environment for the participants to discuss their diseases and, and recovery with other men with shared experiences, thereby providing support and information to help them in their recovery. You guys, this is me talking for a second. Editor's note um, or narrator's note. What have I told you in so many episodes? Sharing facilitates healing. It's one of the first things I learned after my traumatic experience that started all of this, why we're even talking tonight, is sharing and hearing that others have had similar experiences. There's a, a validation of sorts. There is a definite, definite healing aspect to sharing stories and sharing experiences. And that's what these guys are doing. And I love it. Okay, back into their paperwork here, um, their literature. They provide expert fly fishing instruction that enables the participants to learn a new skill, form a healing connection with nature, and participate in a sport they can continue throughout their recovery and their lifetimes. We've talked about that as well. Nature is also a healing medium. Nobody knows exactly why yet, but I promise you that it is being recognized the world over and there are groups all over, just like Real Recovery, catering to every age race, ethnicity, walk of life that you can think of, any shape, size, and flavor that you can consider. There's something tailored to that group to get them outside because there is so much out there in the wilderness. It's, it's good for our minds. It's good for our bodies. It's good for our souls. And there's literally, there's like, that's irrefutable. That is inarguable. Um, even though it's not necessarily provable in a scientific laboratory, but all the people that have experienced it, will stand and testify to you that it absolutely, absolutely is. Um, if any of you are suffering from cancer or have had it and you are in your recovery phase, any of you men out there, here is the information for Arkansas to get a hold of them. It is, well, you can email realrecoveryar at gmail.com, R E E L recovery ar at gmail.com or you can go to www.realrecovery.org and either one of those would be national i believe that's national information um, because there are chapters all over the united states and with having said all of that many of you may be like what do you mean men only okay so i went to the trouble they told me about this because i asked the same thing and i went to the trouble to find the information for you ladies as well the reason this is a men's only retreat is because there already was a females only retreat. And it is for my understanding, specifically survivors of breast cancer, which is near and dear to my heart. Many of you know, I don't know if I ever mentioned specifically how my mom died, but that was, that was how my mom passed away was breast cancer, a seven year battle with it. And she lived the last three of those years with my ex-wife and I, um, and my daughter right after my daughter was born. Y'all it's tough. That's a tough, tough, tough thing for anyone, everyone involved, not just the person suffering from the disease, but everyone that loves them a whole lot. It's a battle for everyone. Um, and breast cancer is pretty brutal. Even, well, yeah, I shouldn't say that. There's probably HIPAA involved with that. But um, listen, let me tell you about 
the one that is specifically for women who've had breast cancer. It is called Casting for Recovery. Their website is castingforrecovery.org. Um, their Instagram is at Casting for Recovery. And again, I just kind of told you the details. Everything I just said about real recovery is going to be applicable to Casting for Recovery. So if you're a lady out there that has had breast cancer, has it now, God forbid, um, or recovering from it, and you want to learn how to fly a fish, all expenses paid, and get out there and share and, and get some camaraderie and make some new friends and learn a new skill, go to castingforrecovery.org or for you men, realrecovery.org and look into that, guys. Get into it. Y'all, that is a guided adventure that I can get behind. I think all of us can. Um, And I hate to see them go through a year with rosters unfilled because Lord knows there's plenty of people out there that have cancer, unfortunately. But guys, listen, like, and this is for you men, specifically for you men, speaking as a man. It's like, cool. It's okay, guys. It's okay to share the sh you're going through, okay? It is okay. We've gotten past that. We've gotten past the old fart mindsets of men don't cry and men don't talk and men don't tell their stories and men don't. Yeah, no, we're past that. We have figured out collectively as a society, as a world, that it's like a really good thing to share your stories because it makes you a better dude. Like there are so many things I could go down the line of, but listen, let's just put it this way. When you're dealing with your stuff, instead of bottling it up, you're less likely to lash out. You're less likely to explode or you know, lash out at people you love a whole lot and say things that you might regret. Like, listen, we're past the old ways. It's cool now. It's good. Go, go learn to fly fish, go meet some new homies, make some friends for life. And then you guys can start planning to spend your retirements together somewhere in Northern Montana, fly fishing on this, some amazing freaking river somewhere for real, real, give them a call, give them a, give them a click, go to their website. Anyway, let's move on from that. Let's go on to our next guided adventure here in Arkansas. This one is, um, these guys weren't actually at the expo, but they are people that I've met by doing the things I do out here in the wilderness in Arkansas. Um, and I met them two or three years ago and that's, um, Ty and Christy Floyd at Mulberry River Outdoor Adventures. Now they are on the Mulberry River, as you might think it's ostensible, correct? Um, and their website is mulberryriveroutdooradventures.com. And on their Instagram, they are at Mulberry River Outdoor Adventures. And I suggest you guys go and check them out because here's what you got with them. Okay, we're kind of covering the gamut of tonight. We're going to have guided fishing trips, guided hiking trips. We're going to like pretty much anything you can do out there. That's one reason I wanted to get these guys in there, even though they weren't at the expo and kind of not a part of all the different groups that we're going to talk about tonight um, from that perspective they are still got their own little thing going. And what they have is, if any of you have ever been to the Mulberry River, and for any of you outside of Arkansas and out there in the rest of the world, when you decide and you start making plans to come to our great state, when you're going to the Mulberry River, you have two main outfitters to choose from if you want to get on the river, correct? And that's going to be Birds, and that's going to be Turner Bend. Now, that's a pretty good little drive up 40 from there. And when you're pulling, say a lot of you guys are out there pulling like fifth wheel camper trailers that are the size of God, a school bus. It's a pain in the tail to get up 23 and it's, it's quite, it can be quite troublesome. Okay. This is one of the best things that Mulberry river outdoor adventures has going for it. What Ty and Christy have going for them is they're on the lower section of the Mulberry where they're literally one mile North of interstate 40. Okay. You come off the interstate, you drive your big old friggin' honking RV up there, and it's like right there. You don't have to do all the twisty curvy up the pig trail. And see, this is important because it'll save you a lot of headache and nightmare of getting that ride up there, but then you can still go explore up there, right? Because most of you guys with those huge RVs, you pull a car behind you. You know, you do a lot of stuff like that. You're still going to get out there. A lot of you guys pulling Jeeps behind you. You can still go up there. You're not that far away from it. You're just much easier access. That's one of their primary things. They are full service RV place. They got all the RV sites, full service. And I called him up last week because I was like, you know what? I want to make sure it's been two years since I've been up there. And y'all, I spent an evening with Ty right there on the river, just looking at the stars. I was trying to take some astral photography, as a matter of fact, on the river. 
And he was just sitting there and we talked and we had a really, really good conversation. Um, they're really good people. They're really, really good people and a great place to go. And, and they've got this awesome camp set up. They bought this section of river. They've got tent sites and some more primitive tent sites, but then they have full electric tent sites as well. And they have all the RV hookups. They are not river outfitters. They're not going to put you on the river. Okay. What they do is give you a place to park that RV so you can go throughout the Ozarks and all around the Ozark mountain region. Now, the reason I added them in tonight, and this is what I wanted to let you guys know about. I see, I follow them on Facebook, I follow them on Instagram, and Ty is always posting pictures up there on this side-by-side all over, dang, the mountains right there off the Mulberry River, and they find the most amazing caves and the most amazing waterfalls and hidden pools, and guys, they find all kinds of awesome stuff all over that mountain, and that's why I wanted to talk to him, because I was like, yo, Ty, are you guys doing guided adventures on the side by sides because that's kind of the feeling you get when you're looking at it. So I went to check one. He said, well, he's like, it's not exactly something that we offer offer. It's like not listed on the website, but I can absolutely be persuaded to take people staying at our place all over that mountain. He's like, it is totally, totally feasible. And I do it all the time. So I wanted to get them in here tonight, guys, that is an Arkansas quote end quote guided adventure. If you're into the side-by-sides, if you're coming up here, because we do, we have some great side-by-side trails. Birds has got a whole damn side of a mountain that they use for that, okay? And they're right up the road. So if you're coming to the area to take that side-by-side up to Birds, yeah, give a, give Ty and Christy a shot. Think about staying there. They've got all the amenities you need with over, I think he told me, he said they just bought 110 more acres. I believe that was the number. And I think he said it gave them a essentially approximately a mile of riverfront access on that there mulberry river so if you're into fishing swimming all those fun things you're right there on the river you've got an easy access for your big old rv and you can get that side by side up there to bird still if you want to but you could also talk old ty into giving you a little tour around the southern tip of the ozarks there right where the mulberry river crosses through and i'm telling you they're always always posting pictures of some really incredible stuff. So that is something to consider. All right, guys. Well, we have run on to our 30 minutes or so, which is normally where we insert the break. Cause you know, a long time ago, I started out trying to do hour long episodes. Um, and so I always run the ad about 30 minutes in. And then here in the last God, six months, all of them have run an hour and 15 to an hour and a half long. So I'll have an ad at 30 minutes and then like an hour of listening. So that's good for you guys. Um, Eventually, I'm going to have to get a little bit more of a structure involved, but it works for now. So anyway, we are going to go to commercial and I will see you guys on the other side. What is up, all of you wayward souls? I want to tell you guys about our newest sponsor, Bendetti Optics a brand based right here in the good old U.S. of A., Portland, Oregon, to be exact. And I bought my first pair of Bendetti sunglasses about a year and a half ago and fell in love with them so much so that I got online and ordered a couple more pair. And when I did, there was a small shipping snafu, an order fulfillment snafu, and I got on the phone, gave them a call, and guess what? I get a call back from who? One of the big men themselves right there in Portland, from the top of the chain, have a great conversation, and we end up starting this great relationship we have. They more than made right, the little snafu that occurred, and I am now a huge proponent of them because I can tell you from personal experience, they are good people, and they are trying to compete with the big boys out there coming in at a price point of about $40, but using the exact same frame material, TR90, and the same polarization process as the big guys. As it turns out, something I think we are already probably new in our hearts, When you buy big name sunglasses, you're buying a big name, not necessarily any more quality than you can get somewhere else, like at Bendetti Optics. They have 29 different styles. They have multiple polarization options for whatever climate you happen to live in. And they back it up with like this lifetime guarantee that if your dog eats your sunglasses, it doesn't matter how you break them. Send it back in with a check to cover shipping and handling and you're golden. You got a new pair on the way. These guys are truly trying to do it right. And they have this philosophy that a really good pair of sunglasses should not cost you so much that you are afraid to wear them. And I think all of us outdoorsmen can relate to that. 
So if you guys, like me, are very practical and like to get more bang for your buck and wear some great looking sunglasses, check out BendettiOptics.com. That's B-E-N-D-E-T-T-I, Optics.com. Or you can go over to Instagram slash Bendetti Optics. And that I highly suggest, whether you buy a pair or not, just to check out the cutest pupper you will ever see modeling sunglasses. Once again, that's BendettiOptics.com. And make sure and let them know Wayward Stories sent you. And welcome back. Thank you guys for hanging around through the break. So let's get on with the show. Next on our list is Riley's Outfitters. Now, Riley's Outfitters, they are right on the junction of the White and the Buffalo River, um, which is a freaking gorgeous area. Okay, that is an incredible area incredible place to be. Um, and they're situated right there on the water, literally right at the confluence of the white and the Buffalo. You can see the confluence of the Buffalo from their front porch. Um, I have done some floating with them. Now I did not get a guided trip with them, but I, um, utilized their rental services and I, and I got a kayak and we went and I fished my way down the old white river, catching trout and smallmouth. Y'all, they've got a really cool outfit. They've got a really cool place to be up there. And I found them to be really, really good people. Okay. That's something that is thematic through most of my stuff. Y'all I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of credit where it's due. Okay. And that goes both ways. Like I will give credit if someone's a jackwad. Like, I'm going to give them credit, full credit for being a jackwad. I'll let you know about it if I need to. Um, But when people are good people, that's usually the people that don't get, you know, no one takes time. Think of it this way. If any of you have ever worked in retail, you know about this. People only take the time to leave reviews. People only take the time to um, give credit where it's due. They don't tend to do that when they're happy with the service because at the moment they're like, yeah, man, I'm going to tell everyone about you. But then like when it comes time, they're sitting at their house later that night and they've unpacked all their crap and they're ready to go to bed and they got to go to work tomorrow. They're like, yeah, I really want to write that review. Oh God, I'll do it tomorrow. Okay. But I promise you, if you take them off, they will tell you in a heartbeat, like they will be online telling the whole world how angry they are at you. And most of the time they're just being a Karen and there's not really, not a lot to gripe about most of the time, but I'm a fan of, because of that, I'm a fan of going out of my way to give people credit when they deserve it, when they're really good people. So most of, again, I said thematically, most of what you or or everything you're going to hear tonight. And most of what you're going to hear on this podcast, big picture, if I'm talking about a group of people, it means that I personally approve of them as solid human beings. Because if I thought they were turds, I wouldn't be here giving them publicity. Does that make sense? So they get my personal stamp of, man, these are such good people. I really enjoyed it. I spent time talking with them when I went and um, floated with Riley's. They really are. They're just really, really good people. As a matter of fact, I have a towel back here behind me. I don't know. Nope, it's hidden by my microphone. You guys on YouTube could probably see it if it weren't for this here, sure, microphone. But I have like a little fishing towel that they hooked me up with when I was there talking to them. They're just really, really good people. Um, So what are they offering you as far as a guided tour? Okay, number one, they will teach you to fly fish. If you don't know how to fly fish, they will teach you to fly fish. And they have full days. You know, you can do a quarter day, half day, three quarter day, full day trips, lunches and produce. Pr- Lunch is provided on anything over a half day trip, half day and more. Um, But they also, also will guide you on an overnight adventure. Put your butt on the river. You can get out there and camp and they will take care of everything for you. Um, I didn't go into the deepest of detail. I went all over their website just to make sure um, that I could see, but I'm not sure. You're probably going to have to bring your own tent. I'm not sure, but give them a call. It's at Riley's Outfitters on Instagram and Riley's Outfitter.com. Go check them out, guys, because again, going back to the point of tonight's show, what do you do when you don't have enough time? Like, what do you do when it's so much hassle to get your kids together or whatever, get your life calmed down, or you just have a very small window of time? Y'all, it, it takes a lot of time and effort to plan a solid trip and cover all your bases so that you don't go out there and end up miserable, end up with a headache and not having any time. And, oh, I forgot the damn bag with the medicine in it or whatever. Um, 
this is like an option to take all of that stress off of you. These guided tours, it's like, okay, I just need to know when I have enough time. I will set it up and all I have to do is show up and they're going to take care of the rest and I'm going to get to have an adventure. That's what this is all about. That's what tonight's show is all about because it is an option for so many of you that, that struggle to get enough time to get outside. So if you want to learn how to say trout fish, y'all fly fish for trout and smallies. Like I love catching smallies and that's what they are doing. They're right at the junction of the white and the buffalo and for smallmouth, they will do the white and lower crooked creek okay but they'll get you out there on the water they have the old school john boats like when i say old school don't let me fool you don't make that sound like they got cruddy old equipment no i mean like actual traditional maybe not old school traditional john boats they'll get you out there they do guided trips with either spinning reels if you don't want to learn to fly fish and you just want to use a good old-fashioned easy to use spinning reel which is one of my favorite things to use for ease of use, ease of transport, and cost considerations, because I have my own gear. Um, but you can do that, or you can do fly fishing. They can put you onto smallies. They can put you onto trout. Um, they can get you on the water. They can get you on the water for a whole day or overnight. And they also have, if you need a place to stay, say you want to stay somewhere, and then go on a guided fly fishing adventure where you learn to fly fish, they got you covered doing that too because they have absolutely gorgeous cabins. I'm talking next level stuff right there on the White River. Y'all, it's beautiful. They have a great, great, great place, a great setup. And you're fishing in the tailwaters of Bull Shows Lake, Lake, which is the White River. It's the last lake in the chain of lakes that the White River makes up from, from gosh, what do you got? Beaver to Table Rock to all of them in between. There's like four or five. I think there's five. Um, and on the tell waters of uh, your last lake there, Bull Shoals, you've got it coming out, running a few miles and heading right into the Buffalo River. The two become one. The White River gets a little bit bigger and continues its course on down towards the Arkansas River. Um, Y'all, they've got an incredible setup. The water there, I can tell you this too. If you're going in the heat of summer, you don't ever have to worry about the water getting warm or really worry about low water because you can check the release, the generation schedule, you can get out there while they're running water through that dam. And I promise you water coming out of the bottom of a giant lake is ice freaking cold. You want to get out there in the summer when it's 110 degrees, boy, you drop off into that water. I promise you, you're not warm anymore. It is an awesome, awesome experience, especially in the late summer, August, when it's hard to find enough water to float and the water you do find is like brackish and lukewarm. No, not here, not on the white river on the tail end of Bull Shoals Lake. And Riley's is set up just so, so perfectly right there. And again, they're really good people. I would send anyone their way any day of the week and not even worry about giving that recommendation. Um, so let's move on. That is, again, Riley'sOutfitters.com, Junction of the White and the Buffalo River. So let's move on to, hmm, are we going to a different waterway? We are. I'm excited to talk about this one. These guys some of my favorite people that I've met and I actually met them long before we came across each other at the expo a couple of weekends ago. I would like to think that's why they were there. I'm not certain, but I know that they were one of the people I contacted about trying to get on board with the expo. And I'm hoping that I played a role in that, but they're really, really cool people. It's Ozark adventure and recreation. If you want to get in touch with them, it is O A R outdoor.com or outdoor.com. OAR and they are at OAR guided tours on Instagram if you want to go see what they're doing. But what they're doing is unique and it's special for one main reason. They are floating people on War Eagle Creek. Y'all go back several episodes of the podcast and you will find a whole episode about paddling War Eagle Creek. Go listen to that episode if you want to learn more about what it's like to paddle War Eagle and it's OAR that put me on War Eagle that day. They're the people I worked with for the shuttle and the whole nine yards. Really, really cool people living out a dream. This is what they're doing is chasing their dream and they're putting people on War Eagle and nobody else is. Okay, there's no one out there putting you on War Eagle right now. To my knowledge, they're the only ones. They've got a monopoly on it at this moment. I highly suggest you get on board and you go do it, guys, because War Eagle, okay, when you think about the Buffalo, 
it is gorgeous. It's amazing. The fly fishing or the fly fishing. Yeah, the fly fishing is great too. But I mean, the smallmouth is incredible. There's some rapids in the upper Buffalo. You have the gorgeous cliffs, the hikes all around. you got big bluff. We all know that. But we also know that it is impossible to get on the Buffalo anymore without being shoulder to shoulder with other people. The same is true of the mulberry. And also the mulberry has got some legitimate class two rapids. Sometimes they touch class three when the water's right. You can get yourself really badly hurt. And many people do every year on the mulberry. Um, And it's really, really busy. Not trying to steer you away from the mulberry by any means. It's a wonderful, wonderful river with, again, incredible, incredible smallmouth fishing. Um, But War Eagle... Nobody, people are sleeping on War Eagle. Go back and listen to that episode. I'll tell you all about it. I did an 11 mile float from their property, OAR's property, all the way down to the War Eagle Mill, historic War Eagle Mill. That's a whole different episode that you need to go listen to. But y'all, War Eagle was secluded, hardcore secluded. And that whole 11 miles on a Saturday afternoon in a floatable time of year in Arkansas where every river is bumper to bumper or keel to bow, however you want to put it. I saw two groups of people totaling seven human beings, seven or eight, may have been eight, two groups, eight people in an 11 mile float on an Arkansas Ozarks crystal clear river. The fishing was off the charts. The smallmouth were freaking incredible. It is underknown, underutilized. Guys, people are sleeping on it. And OAR and um, the owners, which I just really, really love the both, both of them. They're just really, really cool people. They've got something special going on up there right now, and you guys need to check it out. And not only that, okay, not only that. Not only will they get you on War Eagle Creek to fish and float and, and hike and camp or whatever, um, or to fish and float, y'all, they will absolutely guide you. And on top of that, they do guided hikes as well. And that's one of the reasons, not one of the reasons, but one of the key components of them versus the rest of the list tonight. None of the rest of them are doing guided hikes. They're offering guided hikes all over the Ozarks. Guys, they're kind of like the all-inclusive freaking everything. They've got it. They offer it, and they're going to help you do it. And they're really good people to boot. It's not like an in, what's the word, you know, like when you get big corporations and people just become numbers, you know, you, there's a loss of the humanity of people, and then you just kind of get stock service across the board, no matter who you are under any situation. Like, not so. It sounds like they're doing a lot, and they are, but it's still very intimate. They're still very much just normal old people, just like you and me, and they're good, good people, and they're giving you the opportunity if you are, say, like we've talked about before, we got a lot of people that are intimidated to get out there. They're kind of maybe scared of the wilderness. Maybe they're just like, look, I've been a city kid my whole life. I, I'm really listening. I'm listening to Wayward Stories. Boy, he's got me fired up. I want to get out there, and then they start thinking about it, and they're like, well, what if I get eaten by a bear? You know, that would be a terrible way to spend a weekend is to be eaten by a bear. You know, if that's where you're coming from, like, don't be ashamed of that. That's, that's fine. Like guys, you can't know until you know, there's nothing like that to really be scared of. But you know, the best way to find out if you're nervous, you want someone to go along on a ride with you, choose an outfitter that's doing guided services like OAR. They will take you all over all the hell over the Ozark Mountains and help get you on a hike and be a guide along the way and maybe get you over that hump of what's keeping you from getting out there. Um, And again, with the floats, guys, they're doing so, so, so much stuff. And they've also got, well, for one thing, this is another thing you need to know. Okay, we're talking about guided tourists tonight, but they are a full service rental operation. They have shuttles, they have valet service for your cars to get you up and down the river. Like if you just want to go rent from them, if you just want to go rent a boat and get on the river or get a shuttle to get you onto the river from one access point to another onto War Eagle, they're doing that too. So they kind of, again, full service everything. And I was talking to him while we were there at the show. We had a great time talking at the show and we were super busy, but we would usually catch. I went around and caught up with a lot of the guides, the outfitters, the other exhibitors before the doors open, because that's when I had to spend all day talking to people. Um, I spent a lot of time talking to them before the show started. Um, they just bought some new land, and they're going to be launching. They have a whole new access point. They're going to be firing up 
for next year, probably in spring. I, he didn't really say a time frame, but on when it will open. But by next year, they're going to have this place ready to go. And this is super, super cool. We talked about this specifically because kind of what I told him, I was like, well, what he said is they got this nice little piece of land and they're kind of clearing land now to make room for tent sites and hammock sites and all of these things. And I was like, hey, like, you know, let me give you just my two cents. I was like, you do what you want. You're an entrepreneur. You guys are grown man and woman. Y'all do what you want. But, you know, as anyone who is a capitalist, such as myself, I do want to hear input. I want to hear what people think because it will help me to shape where I go. So I kind of offered him from that perspective. I said, listen, man, whatever you guys do, I mean, do what you want. But let me just tell you how valuable it is. Like the land that it sounds like you have, it sounds like you're putting together a secluded paradise. From my experience, and we've talked about this before, I love birds on the mulberry. I love them so much. I love the people there. I have a good, good, good friend there. Um, and I love them. And I love their river access. It, they're a perfect place to go. But it gets really crowded and it gets really, really loud. And people will play music till three in the morning over in their RVs. The people that are there just decide by side in the middle of the night. And they roll in at two in the morning. They crank the radio up and start polishing off the 30 packs. That's not a great experience when you're there because you love being in nature and you want to do your primitive camp and just have peace and quiet and stare at the stars over the Ozark mountains and get up and fish in the morning. So I kind of threw it to him like this. I was like, listen, man, y'all do what you want, but just, I want to tell you how valuable to me it is to have those really pristine kind of quiet places and experiences as an option because when the big RVs start rolling in and stuff, I was like, I know that's money rolling in, but it's also going to run off people like me. You know, it, it definitely excludes a lot of us because we will just stop going to a place. We will find somewhere else to go if it gets overtaken with noise, you know, it ain't about the people or what they're doing. They're side by side. Well, it has nothing to do with that. It just has to do with the fact that the, the silence and the, the, oh gosh, solitude, the solitude of being out there in the wilderness has become broken. And that's kind of what we're there for. And he was like, Oh no, don't worry, bro. He's like, don't worry. He's like, we have every intention of, you know, keeping this pretty primitive, having these awesome little spots. And we're not even going to try to clear many trees, only the, you know, the widow makers and the ones that are just absolutely necessary to make enough room. We're going to try to leave it as is as much as possible. Y'all, I cannot wait to go stay with them. And I'm going to stay in touch with them. Until I know, come next year, I'm going to be finding out. When are you opening up? Because I'm coming camping, guys. I'm coming camping. And they've got some awesome, awesome floats that they're offering up there that I didn't get to do last time. I got to do a pretty awesome float. But they're telling me how um, the stretch is further upstream. How some of them have some bluffs that are kind of reminiscent and really rival even up on the, the buffalo. I mean, obviously not big bluff, but like reminiscent of. Okay, so, and again... The smallmouth fishing is amazing. They will guide you anywhere. So O-A-R, Ozark Adventure and Recreation, O-A-R.com, and at O-A-R, Guided Tourist. If you guys want to check them out, I definitely suggest giving them a follow. And that is, again, another option for a different body of water, a different stream, and even guided hikes. So give them a shot. Check them out. They come with my stamp of approval. Once again, I love those guys. So, boy, I tell you what, I got to watch my verbiage. I got to watch because I'm starting to sound like a commercial for every single one of these. I want to go out there. I want to be clear about this. None of them paid me to talk tonight. Nobody pays me to do damn near anything, especially on this show. I ain't getting paid by no one, like no one, no one. I am paying money out of my pocket to make this show every year. I've operated a freaking net loss just because it's a passion project and I love doing it. Like, I just want to be transparent as possible about that some of this i'm using really flowery language because it's just how i talk but they didn't pay me to say this i just really do really do like most of these people i like the hell out of them um <laughs> most of these people i like all of these people i'm talking about tonight a whole lot they're all really good people um, and they're offering something really cool and an option to help you guys get outside, which, you know, here at Wayward Stories, that is what we're all about. Get off the couch, get out of the chair, get out there and live, live before you die. Don't end up on your deathbed someday going, dadgummit, man, I really did just like, did I, I don't even remember 
that episode of Jersey Shore that I stayed and watched for season after season after season. But I promise you, I promise you, if you went up and hiked the goat trail, if you went down and you floated the upper Buffalo, or if you ran the Mulberry at a three, two or a three, five, I promise you those memories, those memories you will remember on your deathbed. There are memories you won't regret. Um, so anyway, let's get on. Let's get on. We got another two to go, and we'll be getting towards the end of the show tonight. Both of these are really cool. The next one is Checkered Flag Guides and Outfitters. They were also my neighbor. He was on the other side of me. His name is Zach Haynes. Super cool guy. Had a good time talking to him over the course of the weekend. I found out he is a fellow native Okie like myself. He grew up... Um, out in Oklahoma city area. I grew up in Southeast Oklahoma. Um, and he moved to Northwest Arkansas years ago and he has been fishing and fly fishing and he's got fly fishing cred. He's gone and taken the courses, the classes on how to become a good fly fishing guide. Um, he's an expert in the field and he's offering fly fishing tours, um, or fly guided fly fishing in the Beaver Lake tailwaters. Now, now we're still in the white river. Awesome trout, by the way. Awesome trout fishing. Incredible trout fishing in the White River, especially in the tailwaters of these dams. But we've brought you to a whole nother section of the White River where you are literally right in the tailwaters of Beaver Lake. And as such, you're right by Eureka Springs, guys. And I think I've made it pretty clear in the past how freaking amazing Eureka Springs, Arkansas is. Literally might retire there someday. I might. I might. Like it's possible. I mean, I vibe with it so hard right now. It's kind of sad because I can't go there right now. Like I just can't do it. But God, it is just an amazing place with so much history, so much culture. Y'all, you'd be shocked. For all you people outside of Arkansas, I know a lot of people have pretty dim view of Arkansas and a lot of the other southern states. But like, listen, y'all are sleeping on us because of like stereotypes that you hear in the news and your buddies talk about on the old interwebs. Like, don't, don't buy into all that. You have no idea. We have so much culture here in Arkansas, especially the further north you go in Arkansas. We have a ton of culture. We have a ton of awesome stuff. Eureka Springs is incredible. So if you're going to learn how to fly fish or get guided, maybe you already know how to fly fish, but you just want to go take a guide to put you onto the hot spots on the rivers and you want to come see our Ozarks, y'all. It doesn't get much better than that. I'm going to stay in Eureka with all these amazing venues and restaurants and events that are constantly going on in the 1886 Crescent Hotel. Go up in there and and do a freaking haunted ghost tour or sleep in a room and maybe be haunted by one of their ghosts. Like, y'all, there's so much going on. And then you can go down here and go fly fishing. And you're right on Beaver Lake. Beaver Lake's amazing in and of itself, guys. You can get into Beaver Lake. If you're scuba diving, get out there and scuba dive. Scuba, scuba, scuba on the lake. Beaver Lake is like nationally famous. It is crystal clear. It's an awesome place to dive. Beaver is an awesome place to fish. But like, if you want to get on a guided tour, get a hold of Checkered Flag Outfitters, set you up a guided excursion, and have this gentleman teach you how to fly fish, put you on the river, in the hot spots, in the tellwaters, the crystal clear tellwaters, on the White River, the scenery, guys, the scenery is just absolutely... It's absolutely incredible. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous place to be. The whole, the whole of the Ozarks, okay? The whole, the entirety of the Ozarks is just absolutely beautiful. But I'm talking when you get down into the heart of the Arkansas Ozarks and you're down around Eureka, y'all, there's not much better. There's not much better. It's just really not. If you want to check it out, if you want to get a hold of Zach Haynes and Checkered Flag Guides and Outfitters, you can do so by going to checkeredflagguidesandoutfitters.com or you can go on Instagram at at checkeredflagguides. I highly suggest that you get a hold of them because, I mean, I'm going to, like, listen, for real, real, most of these people that I'm talking about tonight, I'm going to hook up with over the next year or two as I get more time, as some of the college stuff starts to, to quiet down a little bit and I get more settled in a routine. Y'all, I literally just finished up my first two years of school in eight months. I've done 23 and a half classes in eight months. I have had no time, every spare moment of my life that wasn't dedicated to work or my daughter what's dedicated to school. I was sleeping like five hours a night, but I'm over that hump 
to where I'm now only able to do my one accelerated class per term. And that gives me more time. So as things calm down, I'm going to be going and spending time with these guys. And I'll be back with new, new stories. I'll be back with whole new episodes, hopefully about that stuff. I can't wait to do it. And I think you guys should too. And to be, you know, transparent again, I always try to be completely honest. I'm not really a guided tour kind of person myself. I'm like a super independent, stubborn ass. Like I, I, I want to do it. I'm going to go do it my way. You know, I'm going to go do it at my leisure on my, my schedule and do it my way. That's just how I am. It's just how I am. But I will absolutely, almost every one of these people offered me, man, come up and come with me, come check it out, man. I'll take you out. I'm going to take them up on that because you know why? Even though that's not necessarily my way of doing things in the world, maybe my preferred way, who the hell would turn down getting to spend time with absolute experts in their fields, teaching you how to do things from their point of view. I have ways that I fish that I love to fish, but God, it'd be stupid of me. It'd be freaking stupid of me not to take them up on their offers and get the hell out there. I absolutely intend to do that. And I absolutely intend to do it with old Zach Haynes here because number one, I love beaver. I love the white river and I absolutely love Eureka Springs. So like that is to oh my God, it's a win, 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 win. You guys should all, consider that I already gave him gave you guys the info checkered flag guides and outfitters.com and at checkered flag guides on Instagram. So let's move into our final outfitter of the night. I saved the most unique, I would say for last, and I'm still trying to figure out you guys over there at yonder, Kate and Joe, don't take this as an affront that I put you at the end because my mind, you know, I grew up a musician. I grew up playing in bands and stuff. And you, you know, you always save the headliner for last. And in a way I kind of considered this a headliner because this is a unique and out of the ordinary for the state of Arkansas, what they are offering and where they are offering it. So it really was, it wasn't by any means, you know, to save you to the end because people quit listening. People don't, people generally listen to episodes all the way through. Um, but we're about to talk about something really, really, really cool really special in my opinion. Um, it is called Yonder Adventure Company. That is the name of their company. And it's Kate Handley and Joe Goodwin. And what they are doing, okay, they're offering guided, multi-day guided adventures of the Buffalo River in drift boats. Okay, that is a new thing for the Buffalo River and right here in the state of Arkansas, many of you who like to get outside and love to read about and learn about, you know, stuff out there and are got that adventure. So you've heard of stuff like this out there on those great Western rivers. And I mean, even some of our great Eastern rivers out there in a drift boat, guys, this is so cool because to me, when I think of a drift boat, a guided adventure in a drift boat somewhere on the Colorado or the snake river or where the hell ever you pick it the great American river where it has been done, man, it's romantic. And it like, it really evokes thoughts. It really, really, really provocative to the mind. It makes you think of those really romantic stories that you read about in outdoor living and, and all these, you know, outside magazine and God, there's a history. There's such a history. There's such a history. And to me, I love this because in my opinion, the Buffalo River absolutely deserves, absolutely deserves to join the ranks of those great American rivers that have these kind of adventures, these kinds of guided adventures. Because the Buffalo itself is legendary. The Buffalo self itself is a mystical, mythical river of American lore. The Buffalo River absolutely belongs amongst the ranks of of the great American rivers. And it is only fitting, in my opinion, it's only freaking fitting that somebody has brought drift boat style guided adventures to our incredible Buffalo River. Y'all, this is one you're going to want to check out, okay? If you're here in my state or anywhere in even some of the neighboring states, especially Texas, I told you guys about the never ending relentless onslaught of Texas tags piling into the Buffalo River every single weekend. A lot of people know 
about the Buffalo River. But outside of the South, possibly not so much. I mean, if you listen to my show, I've been talking about it for 57 episodes now because it's just that special. But you guys, listen, this is an incredible idea and an incredible way to enjoy this river. If you were to go back, I don't know how many episodes now, but I had an episode recently in the last few months called The Buffalo River Experience. I encourage you to go back and listen. If you have any interest in this at all, go back and listen to that episode because I specifically outline a three-night solo adventure I did in my kayak with a little stool, a tripod stool, and a hammock and my fishing pole. And I tell you what I believe is my Well, what, in my opinion, what I believe to be the best way to enjoy the wonders of the Buffalo River, the way to get you beyond the shoulder to shoulder, you know, um, congestion of the upper Buffalo on the busy weekends. And that is to do a multi-day adventure that takes you further and further and further down the river away from the super high popular, super highly, you know, um, visited places and get really, really intimate with the mama buffalo okay what these guys are doing for those of you that because you you guys i heard so many people i got so many emails like dude i loved that episode but i would never go out there by myself for four days i got so many emails like that okay well here you're being offered a way to safely at least to you, feel more safe. Like, I felt pretty darn safe. I know my way around a river. That was, you know, normal for me to go do something like that. But for those of you that that seems just a little bit beyond what you're willing to do, Yonder Adventure Company is now giving you the option. You want to take a five-day freaking trip down the Buffalo? Matter of fact, if you go and explore their website, you will see that you can talk to them about varying links, and I wouldn't be surprised. If you might could talk them into, for the right price, of course, take you the damn length of the river. I don't know. I don't know that far into it, how far they're willing to go. But I know that, you know, right off of their freaking sheets and the paperwork that they gave me when I talked to them, I can get you a four or five day trip in. And like, here's the cool thing about it in a drift boat. Okay. Super stable, super stable boat. You can fish. You can do all the things that you can do. But like, here's the deal. Like, you don't have to do anything. You just got to show up, guys. Bring you a bathing suit. Maybe bring you some uh, sun spray, you know, some suntan, some uh, sunblock. But you just show. You just show up. They're going to cover the food. They're covering breakfast. They're covering lunch on the bank of the river. Like, listen, go to their website, and that is yonderadventurecompany.com, and go read all about it. They have a really nice little website. It's really clean, very professional website. Go and read about it. It's easy to navigate. And, and learn about the backgrounds of Kate and Joe. They have the chops, y'all. They've got the cred. They've got the experience. They've got the certifications. You know me. I'm a search and rescue guy. I'm all about certs. I'm all about training. Because, you know, you, you know it's like they say, practice like you play. If you don't have the training, you're going to fail. Fall on your face when the time matters the most. Well, these guys, when you're talking about water water that can be swift water, you know, there's a lot that goes into that. There's a lot of liability and there's a lot of training that you're required to have. They have it. And I'm talking, they've got chops that any, any avid whitewater adventurer would love to have. They've spent time and guided on rivers that some people only dream of trying to go float once. Like the Okoe River, y'all, I spent some time at the Okoe River a couple years ago, y'all. And Okate, she spent time there on the Okoe river. They've got the chops, they've got the cred. And that's what I I told them. I was like, yo, when I met them and I started talking about it, I was like, yo, this sounds like those floats down the Colorado and down the, and she was like, yeah, that's exactly where the idea came from. Why don't we have that on the Buffalo? And they put together this company and y'all, I can't be more supportive of that whole idea. Like I said, it's a magic. It's a mystique to the great American rivers of the West and to the East to a certain degree, the Buffalo deserves it. The Buffalo freaking deserves that kind of service running up and down its banks. These guys are doing it. And if I'm I'm telling you, like I said, you show up, they're going to put up your tents. They're not your tents, their tents. They're going to put up tents. You just show up. They're going to put the tents up. They're going to take you place to place. All you get to do is lay back, relax, and let yourself go fish, float, swim, 
eat dinners that they're cooking and providing. Y'all, y'all, so freaking cool. Like I said, I'm one that likes to do things my way, myself. That is just who I am. But for any of you, like I said, it's such a great contrast because so many of you wrote me emails saying that Buffalo River episode was so cool. And I loved listening to you elucidate it and and describe it. I was able to be there and just see what that was like in a way. But I could never go out there like that. I'd have to have a group of people. And I don't know if I could ever get anyone to go with me to do that. Well, guys, I'm telling you right now, here you go. You have someone to go with you now. And not only just someone to go with you, someone that will stay sober the whole time and cook you breakfast in the morning. I've had dates that were worse than that. Like, you know what I mean? So just consider it. Just consider it. Just consider it. This is awesome. I just absolutely love it. Kate, Joe, I'm like, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, I'm like saying thank you that you guys brought this to Arkansas because to me, it just fits. It fits. It The buffalo deserves it. The buffalo deserves it. And I think that is the coolest thing ever. Yonder Adventure Company. Um, YonderAdventureCompany.com. And if you want to follow them on uh, Instagram, which you should, at Yonder dot adventure dot co at yonder period adventure period co um and you should definitely go follow them definitely go to the website read all about it and start lining up some guided adventures because i promise you don't know when i'll get to do that but i promise you you know what i'm probably going to jump on board with that that would be a great great trip and that'd be a really enjoyable way to experience the river in a drift boat with a master guide taking care of all the business for once, so I don't have to do it myself. I think that is super cool. Anyway, guys, that brings us to the end of the night show, really. We've covered everything I wanted to cover. We have made our hour easily, plus about five minutes. That's not too bad. I've been running an hour and a half, and I like those long shows. But um, we've really kind of covered it all. Adventures in Arkansas. Y'all, I'm always, always trying to get you guys out here to see our wonderful state, and I'm always always trying to get you off of your couch and and give you all the ideas any way I can think of come up with to get you out living your life because I promise you if you ever heed my advice and you ever get up and even if you just start small with day trips if you ever get up and start going if you ever follow that call that pull under your sternum to get you out there I'm telling you you're not going to regret it you're not going to regret it and you're going to make memories that you will take to your dying day where all the things that you're filling your time feeling, filling your time with now, like reality television and Instagram and social media and TikTok, you won't remember tomorrow all the stuff you saw on TikTok today. But I promise you, if you went out today and you hiked one of these awesome hikes here in this state, you'll remember it. You'll remember it. It won't go away anytime soon. So, Guys, give it a shot. If you're scared, if you're a little bit nervous, if you're you just have something that's giving you some trouble and getting over the hump and getting outside, consider this. You can pay it done for you, and then you still get to experience it. You don't just have to watch it on YouTube. You can actually go out there and not worry about anything. I think that for a lot of you, that's a win-win. I think that's a win-win. And I am excited to have been able to bring you this episode tonight because I got to meet all of these awesome people. Some of them I knew previously. Some of them are new acquaintances that I am really glad that I got to make. And I can't wait to do stuff in the future with most of these guys. And I hope that you guys will do some stuff in the future with these folks because I found them all to be incredible people and they deserve your support and your dollars. If you're going to go out there and get outside, every single one of them is going to work their butt off to earn it. I promise you. You know, I just got a sense for these things. It's got a sense for these things. Anyway, let's go ahead and wrap it up for tonight, guys. Thanks for coming back. Thanks to all of you new listeners that have just joined us. I hope you enjoyed tonight's show. If you did, you know, I said it earlier, please rate, review, and subscribe. That's the primary thing that will help me. And the other thing that we've been running up on here in the last few weeks, I've had people that have started sharing particular episodes in groups that they are a part of thinking, hey, you got this cool episode about Caddo Lake or what the hell ever. And I'm going to go share it in my Caddo Lake group. And the next day I've got a billion freaking downloads of the podcast or they've watched it on YouTube. Like 
that right there has been hugely significant in growing the show. So if you've come across something that you think your group would enjoy, by all means, I would be eternally grateful if you would copy and paste the link right into that group, into a post. That would be awesome. If you guys want to get in touch with me, please do, first of all, do not be shy. Don't hesitate, guys. I live for the interactions, and I've made some really good friends, people that have even contributed to this show just by getting in touch with me. And you can do that by emailing mywaywardstory at gmail.com or you can go to the website, which is waywardstories.com and you can use the contact button within there. And also there's the whole nexus. If you want to find my Instagram, my Facebook, anything that we're doing can be found at waywardstories.com. So it's a really good thing to go check out. It's a really good place. It's kind of the nexus of all things wayward stories. But by all means, do not be shy, guys. I want to hear from you. I would love to talk to you. And I have some great ongoing, hell, I've got text messages, threads going on today with people that I know solely because they took the time to send me an email and I've made a new friend. And I think that that is awesome. Anyway, guys, again, thank you for sticking around. Thank you for coming back. Welcome to all of you new listeners, and I am really looking forward to talking to you guys again in two weeks because I got a feeling we're going to have some pretty cool stuff to talk about two weeks from now if everything holds together and plays out the way that I'm kind of expecting it to. Anyway, I will catch you guys then. Until then, you guys get off your tails, get out there, live some life, and do not forget to be good to each other.